all the millions of animal species on Earth are armed with some kind of weapon deployed to catch their prey, evade a hunter, or secure a mate. This weaponry gives animals the edge they need to endure. Finely tuned over millions of years of evolution, only the strongest contenders remain fighting in a battle for survival. In a world where your next meal may be literally oceans away, every mouthful counts, and competition is fierce. The battle for resources drives animals to the most extreme environments. To find prey, or escape predators, in the world's great animal arms race. Today, 70% of the Earth's surface is covered by water. Oceans were the world's first battlegrounds. And they are still the largest. The ocean's vast blue wilderness favors prey armed with the ability to slip away into the depths. But hunting becomes easier for predators when they work together. Dolphins are among the most intelligent animals on the planet. Their large brain is their most powerful weapon. These bottlenose dolphins not only communicate with each other using clicks and squeaks, they also use precise echolocation that works like sonar to find their prey. Schools of fish that may be as far as 200 meters away. When fish detect predators approaching, they either try to flee or form a tight defensive school called a bait ball. They hope predators will be confused by the twisting and turning silvery bodies. Each fish tries to stay as close to others as possible, rapidly changing direction as if driven by some central intelligence. But there is none. Against the intelligence of the attacking dolphins, they stand no chance. The dolphins break up the bait ball. It reforms, only to be broken again and again. individual fish picked off.
the defensive strategy of the bait ball is triggered by the onslaught of predators. In the oceanic arms race, individual predators usually have the advantage, while prey have the numbers. The open ocean is the world's largest desert, and conserving energy is a tactic that can be as important as finding the next meal. Weighing over 2,000 kilograms and 10 meters long, whale sharks are the largest fish in the sea. She feeds only on one of the ocean's tiniest creatures, plankton. In most of the oceans, plankton is scarce. But at seasonal hotspots like this one at Ningaloo Reef off Northwest Australia, it's abundant. In some areas, plankton can be so plentiful, it can be seen from space. The whale shark must swim across the entire Indian Ocean to arrive at Ningaloo. Her secret weapon is knowledge. She knows the ocean currents, the conveyor belts of the sea. And she'll ride these currents, expending minimum energy between meals. Exactly how she knows just when and where plankton will be remains a mystery. But once she arrives, she gorges. Opening her meter-wide mouth as she rises through the plankton cloud, she takes in tens of millions at a single gulp. She must eat an average of 21 kilos every day. Even though billions upon billions of plankton are consumed, their strategy of vast numbers and virtual invisibility has seen them survive for millions of years. The numbers game is played by a great variety of marine creatures. Once a year, spider crabs on the Australian southeast coast mobilise into armies. They are here to upgrade their defensive armour. For extra protection, they march towards the shore in their tens of thousands. But in these shallow inshore waters, there are enemies everywhere. A smooth stingray is on the hunt. And spider crab is on the menu. For almost the entire year, spider crabs have a hard exoskeleton, like a suit of armour, to protect them. But as they grow, their armour becomes too tight, and the crabs must change into a new one through a process called molting. It can take up to an hour to shed their shells, 
and at least a week before the new shell hardens. Their defences are down. The patrolling stingray seizes the moment. The eyes on the top of their heads are of little use. So for the final strike, the stingrays rely on their acute sense of smell. The naked crabs pile one on top of the other. A few are sacrificed to protect the many. Off the southern coast of Australia, a female sea lion hunts plentiful but highly elusive prey. She needs to kill at least 10 kilograms of fish a day. She hunts alone, but she's equipped with highly sensitive whiskers that detect the slightest movements of her manoeuvrable prey. When a fish can make a sudden change of direction, she can react in less than a third of a second. This skilled hunter is also hunted. The sea lion has a thick layer of fat that shields her from the icy water. It also makes her an enticing target for predators seeking a high calorie feed. Her nemesis is the great white shark. 400 million years of evolution has perfected the ultimate marine killer. A great white can grow up to six meters and weigh almost 2,000 kilograms. They are immensely powerful. On attack, they push through the water at up to 60 kilometers an hour. And with jaws containing five rows of serrated teeth that are replaced weekly, their destructive force is awesome. But sea lions are observant, intelligent, and also fast in the water. So the shark must outsmart them, using cunning as well as violence. Camouflage helps the shark reduce the distance between it and its prey. Then, to close for the kill, the shark uses a fiendishly clever battle plan. Great white sharks are the only animal other than humans known to use the sun when they hunt. Like fighter pilots, they press home their attack with the sun behind them. So their prey is blinded by the glare. By the time the sea lion realizes she's in mortal danger, it's too late. Immense power coupled with intelligence are formidable weapons.
The open ocean may be a vast desert. But like all deserts, there are oases. Coral reefs occupy less than 2% of the ocean, yet support a quarter of all marine animals, rivaling even the Amazon for species diversity. These saltwater sanctuaries are the rainforests of the sea. And it's here that marine animal arms races are at their most merciless. On Australia's Great Barrier Reef, the lionfish's key weapon is deception. It hides in plain sight. Its prey are alert and ready to take off at the slightest hint of danger. So the lionfish's tactic is to be deliberately slow and conspicuous. The prey are lulled into a false sense of security The stripes and long fanned fins confuse and mesmerize. It's a form of disruptive camouflage that disorientates smaller fish until they can no longer judge how close their predator is. beautiful and deadly. The stonefish hides from its prey in a very different way. It looks exactly like a lump of coral or encrusted rock. The perfect disguise for a deadly ambush predator. But the stonefish is not only a deceptive killer, its defenses are among the most formidable in the sea. Protected by 13 toxin-laden spines, this is the world's most venomous fish. Even when they see the stonefish, would-be predators know to stay well clear. Once its ambush has been set, the stonefish waits. The attack is over in the blink of an eye. Ocean arms races are not always about speed or force. Sometimes slow and steady can win the day. The Pacific Blue Bottle drifts passively with the wind and currents, but has deadly tentacles that can capture prey. It's not a jellyfish, but a colonial creature called a siphonophore. Four different organisms joined in an intimate alliance. The venomous tentacles catch and kill any prey they touch. Another part digests food, 
while the third organism handles reproduction. The only part of the blue bottle, also called a man of war, that is above the surface acts as a sail. Deadly in both offense as well as defense, this strange mix of creatures seems invincible. But in any arms race, there are always countermeasures. And one bizarre sea slug, the blue glaucus, has developed an immunity to the blue bottle's venom. In a slow motion ballet of death, the glaucus, armed with a strong hinged jaw and razor sharp teeth, anchors itself to the blue bottle and slowly devours it. The glaucus then takes its prey's toxins and stores them in special sacks at the end of its finger-like appendages, where they become a recycled weapon and a crucial part of the glaucus's own defenses. Chemical warfare is one of the most ancient manifestations of the animal arms race. In the shallow waters that fringe Indonesia's rich archipelago, a cone shell moves slowly and with deadly intent. This exquisitely beautiful armor protects a battery of deadly weapons. A hypersensitive prey detector and a harpoon loaded with lethal venom. The cone shell siphon is a large tube that can detect the chemical signals released into the water by potential victims. The siphon locks onto a wary and agile target. Slowly, the cone shell creeps closer. Its harpoon is locked and loaded. The payload is venom, a deadly cocktail of around a hundred different toxins, so lethal that one drop can kill ten adult humans. A small fish has no chance. The final weapon is its cavernous mouth. Peacock Manta Shrimp brings a very different array of weaponry to the arms race. The most powerful punch on the planet, coupled with the most complex eyes in the animal kingdom. Humans and most other animals have three photoreceptors. This shrimp has an incredible 16. It can see both the infrared and ultraviolet ends of the visible spectrum. With stalks that allow both eyes to rotate 230 degrees, very little can slip past unobserved. A small crab a favorite prey, stumbles into range. It relies on its exoskeleton armor for defense. But the manta shrimp has two large and incredibly powerful clubs that can deliver a punch with the force of a 22 caliber bullet.
the strike is so fast that the water around the club boils. The crab shell is no match for this knockout blow. But the deadly fists of the ocean's lightweight boxing champ are about to go up against an eight-armed opponent. The common octopus depends on crustaceans, like the mantis shrimp, for food. Each of her limbs are loaded with strong suckers to drag her prey toward a deadly beak at the base of the tentacles. At only 10 centimeters, the mantis shrimp is small, but it's not one to back away from a fight. Counterattack is often the best defense. The octopus didn't see that coming. But she has a trick up her sleeves for her next assault. Octopus have a superpower in their armory that others can only dream of. She's a shapeshifter. She has light-sensitive proteins in her skin. They send messages straight to pigmented skin cells that determine color and even texture. Her camouflage reacts almost instantly to her surroundings. She changes her appearance before she even knows what she's transforming to. It's one of the most effective concealments in the animal arms race. And octopuses need it. They are at the top of the menu for many apex predators and require their full range of defenses to survive. They deploy mimicry, camouflage, stealth. With no bones, they can occupy the tiniest of bunkers. And can beat a strategic retreat behind an inky smoke screen. Octopus are the masters of deception. Defeated by her last prospective meal, she's on the hunt again. This time she decides that ambush will be the better tactic. The crab's external armor is made of keratin that protects them from most predators. But the octopus isn't like most predators. Victory. Now she deploys her concealed and deadliest weapon, a needle-sharp beak, the only hard part of her body. The crab's armor is no protection. Once again, the octopus can hang up her cloak of invisibility.
in the battle for survival, there are times when the urge to reproduce plays directly into the jaws of the predator. Every few years, female green sea turtles must come to land to breed. Some make remarkable journeys of over 1,500 kilometers to return to the same beaches on which they hatched. Tiger sharks know this, and they also return to those same nesting beaches. The tiger is armed with speed and rows of serrated teeth that can both cut and saw, perfect to break through the shell of a turtle. But he is a cautious predator and waits until the time is just right to attack. The turtles choose night to come ashore. It's cooler and they feel protected by the cloak of darkness. Females can weigh up to 300 kilograms. On land, unsupported by water, laying eggs is a tiring process that can take all night. Exhausted, she returns to what she hopes is the sanctuary of the ocean. The tiger shark is one of the very few predators able to bite through the turtle's protective shell. Timing is everything. With so many turtles in one place, the hunting is easy. Most underwater weaponry is used in the fight for food, but some is deployed to claim and defend territory. The sarcastic fringe head looks unremarkable until threatened. Then he transforms into an alien-like creature, using his enormous mouth to intimidate the competition. Living along the Pacific coast of North America, he makes his home in burrows or anything available. Here is where he spends most of his time, guarding his shelter diligently. But if another fringe head dares to show interest in his domain, a turf war breaks out. They size each other up, flexing and snapping their oversized jaws. If the intruder doesn't back down, the incumbent exposes his needle-like teeth. Eventually, bluff gives way to combat. It's a battle of gaping mouths.
the larger sarcastic fringe head wins the day. The loser admits defeat and retreats. For fringe heads, bigger is always better. Size matters too in the battles that break out every spring on the beaches of Northern California. Breeding season for these northern elephant seals. Males fight for the chance to mate. Weighing in at over 2,000 kilograms, this large male is the beach master. His size is his most effective weapon. Warning any interlopers to stay away from his harem of over 50 females, his roars are amplified by his large proboscis. Bellows that can be heard four kilometers away. Brimming with youthful confidence, a younger male feels ready to mount his challenge against the beachmaster. He has desperation on his side. He must win if he is to breed. As they close for battle, the Beachmaster once again shows off his enormous size and power. He hopes to win by intimidation. But this competitor isn't backing down. Each draws blood with their sharp canine teeth. The smaller females must keep clear of combat or risk becoming collateral damage. Over years of fighting, the male skin scars and thickens. The Beachmaster has greater protection than his younger challenger. As the battle rages, a third young male joins the contest for mating rights. By coming in under the radar. While the beachmaster is occupied, the young male sneaks in and makes his move on a receptive female. They have just enough time to mate before the beachmaster beats his challenger into submission. sneaky male slips away unscathed. Unaware his harem has been compromised, the beachmaster reasserts his mating rights. Mangrove lion tropical shores are the battlegrounds for a fish that is quite literally out of the water. Mudskippers have opted out of the underwater arms race. One of the only fish capable for living for extended periods out of water, at low tide, 
mudskippers leave the sea to feed on worms, bugs, and small crustaceans. On the mudflats, there are fewer species competing for resources. Mudskippers' battles are between themselves. Large eyes on the top of their heads give them almost 360 degree vision to keep tabs on all potential rivals. When one male sees another intruding on his domain, he raises his dorsal fin, a battle flag announcing his intention to engage. And if the intruder doesn't back off, the encumbered mudskipper opens wide. It's a gaping war. The males threaten, chase and bite at each other in a contest of size and strength. The mudskipper is one of the only fish in the world to walk away when beaten. The water channels that thread their way to mangrove lion coasts are also the scene for interspecies skirmishes and some extraordinary animal weaponry. Lurking close to the surface, an archer fish lies in wait. The black marks along his back help him to blend with the shadows. Keen eyesight allows him to detect prey above the water's surface. But how to reach it? This fish is a sniper and can hit a target over a meter away. Amazingly, he can adjust his aim to allow for the refraction of his target's image as light passes from air to water. The archerfish must be deadly accurate. Crickets have powerful legs and can easily jump out of range. His ammunition is cheap, so he can afford to be trigger happy. Bullseye. Outright conflict is only one consequence of the underwater arms race. Strategic alliances and intrigue also feature in struggles for survival. Perhaps the fish with the most allies is the blue streak cleaner wrasse. At only 10 centimeters long, it makes a bite-sized snack for many reef inhabitants. But predator and prey have negotiated a truce. The cleaner wrasse performs a peace dance for his prospective ally, a moray eel. The giant moray eel is the largest of the eels, reaching up to 2.5 meters in length. With two sets of sharp teeth, he is well equipped to take on octopus, crabs, and fish. But with the cleaner wrasse, he engages in a terrifyingly intimate trade. 
The wrasse eats parasites and dead tissue from the eel's hard-to-reach places. And in return for the wrasse's cleaning services, the moray refrains from eating him. But another fish wants to share the benefits of the alliance without paying a tribute. The false cleaner ras is a fraud. He mimics the peaceful cleaner ras both in appearance and by the dance that lulls other fish into thinking he is harmless. But he is not. He has large curved canines on his lower jaw and likes to feed on living flesh. The disguise enables the false wrasse to get close enough to young and inexperienced fish to mount a surprise attack and steal a quick bite of scales and skin before its victim knows what hit it. Deceitful, yet effective. All of the ocean species bring unique weapons to their battles for survival. But very few are able to use the same weapons to fight in different ways. Bottlenose dolphins have the intelligence to adapt their hunting strategies to counter the defenses of local prey. Here on the coast of North America, they're known for a highly risky battle plan. Stranding. Their sophisticated communications allow them to work as a team. One dolphin surfaces, watchful for danger and on the lookout for a suitable beachhead. Their prey of choice is mullet. Mullet can leap out of the water as they attempt to escape, but the dolphins use this to their advantage. Advancing in small groups, the dolphins herd the fish toward the shore and shallow water. Once in position, the leading dolphin emits a vocal cue to launch the operation. They attack in perfect formation, driving the fish toward the shore with a powerful wave of water. The mullet's aerial escape strategy is futile. In the shallows, the dolphins are able to pick off their stranded prey. Every dolphin rolls onto its right side, creating a uniform barrier and minimizing the mullet's escape. Others also benefit from the dolphin's clever maneuvers. Called strand feeding, this hunting tactic is passed down from mother to daughter. Males prefer to hunt alone. But it is dangerous. Dolphins risk stranding themselves. It takes at least six years for a mother to allow her daughter to practice strand feeding without her. In this big blue battleground, every creature has its own array of weapons for finding prey or avoiding becoming prey themselves. An arsenal of gaping mouths with dagger-sharp teeth. Knockout punches. And super speed. Give some animals an edge in the underwater arms race.
but the greatest survivors are those who can learn and adapt. In the world's largest arena, intelligence is the key to victory.